the horse had nebula. The Great Orion Nebula. Messier 78. Juice, which can go into a supernova at any second now. The terrifying witch head nebula. All except the latter lie in the constellation of the hunter, Orion. Let's leave our telescope at home and point our camera lens towards the Orion Molecular Cloud Complex. Of Galactic Hunter. Um, we're here back at Nelson's Landing and as you can see it's already dark and uh, we do have a little bit of moonshine but it's directed towards the back of the camera so we're gonna have to utilize our car lights for now which is gonna be a pain in the butt trying to set up but we'll get that done. Today we're going to capture Bonner's Loop. It's going to be a huge uh, nebula right there in Orion which is rising right now. So we're going to set up over here. Uh, we did not bring our telescope today because we're going to use this camera and this lens right now um, towards Orion. So let's set up and start shooting. It's gonna be four long hours. Yes, oh yeah, we're going to do four hours with this camera with no modification and no filter. And we'll see how the stacked image looks like. And if we don't like it, we will try to add four hours with a filter. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. When that go will on. be about eight hours. Eight go. hours of imaging. A pain in the oh. <laughs> A pain. <laughs> All right, let's go. This is a revisit. We really wanted to see what the difference would be between what we got with our old T3i and our new 7D Mark II. We expect the difference to be minimal. We do not want to modify our camera because we eventually want to get a CCD. Okay, so this is uh, the setup. We have a placement here for this camera to go on top of here with a ball head. Then this is the mount as always linked to the power source, which is down there. Hard to see. Oh, I can't aim. Okay, <laughs> down there. And that's it. So all I have to do left is to put um, this camera right on top of here yep and then we just let it go for four hours <laughs> we're not sure how long it takes before the battery is run out but this is the reason why we plan to put the camera in front of the car instead of behind the car so that way we don't have to you know get outside because it's kind of chilly today and uh, i'm sure it's just going to get more chilly now that it's becoming winter yep and before we get you guys to be on here We'll do a test shot of three minutes and then one of six minutes 
and we'll see if it's fine because we have no guiding today. So we're going to have to have a good polar alignment. We are now ready to image. It took less time than it would have taken to install our telescope. Let's see what we can get. Here is a viewfinder. As you can see, uh, Orion's belt in the center. Uh, let's do a three minute exposure test. Well, here is a shot I just got of three minutes. As you can see, there's star trails everywhere. Um, that's pretty bad. So I'm going to try to fix that on the mount and see what was wrong. Okay, so here's a second shot, which is much better. Uh, the problem was that the mount was not set up properly. I had to do a one star alignment. Here is the shot I just got. It's obviously too bright at three minutes because the ISO is 1600 right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that to... Um, I'm gonna change the ISO to... This right here is what is about to ruin tonight's progress. The camera lens was set to f1.8, which is a huge mistake on our part, because having the aperture open so wide created coma on the edges of our image. Even though we rated to 2.2 before launching 4 hours of exposure, it was still too low and we should have aimed for f4 instead. Let's see... 800 maybe? <laughs> Mosquitoes. 800, and let's try again. Six minutes instead of three, just to see if we have star trails. So it's more of a test than anything. And I'm also going to lower the ISO to 400. And let's launch. Six minutes at ISO 400 seems to be the sweet spot. You can see several nebulae in a single shot, but also so much comma. We did not pay enough attention to the edges of our shot at the time, and we launched our exposures without realizing the problem. Oh well. Lesson learned. Banner's Loop is an emission nebula that originated from a supernova about 2 million years ago. It was discovered in 1895 with long duration film exposures. Because it is in the Orion Molecular Cloud Complex, aiming at the loop with a camera lens basically assures that we will also capture the Orion Nebula, the Horsehead Nebula, M78, and the Witchhead Nebula. We'll capture the famous Betelgeuse as well. Eerily, the origin of the loop is still unknown. While we were waiting for our camera to take all those soon-to-be-useless shots, we passed the time by watching videos on our phone and ate. Alright, so it's about four or five hours later now and uh, it's been pretty quiet, like zero people have passed by tonight, but it's the middle of the week. We watched a couple of movies and a few episodes of one of our shows that we're watching right now. So we spent about, yeah, so like four hours, I would say, on the imaging. The problem is those clouds... There's are... a, a lot of clouds coming from Las Vegas and they've just been spreading out very uneven, yeah. unevenly. So they've been coming like one by one, I mean, like layers of clouds passing by. So that means we have no idea how many frames we can use and keep for stacking. Because since all of our shots are six minutes each, uh, if one tiny cloud passed by during that shot, then that's this whole six, six minutes. minutes is gone. <laughs> so we estimate that maybe we've got about three, maybe four hours of good data to use. I'm guessing three. So we'll see. Uh, we'll check at home, and uh, once we stack everything, we'll show you what it looks like, and we'll decide if we should use a filter to add more or not. So suspense. Alright, let's go home. Okay, so we just took the darks, we did 13 darks. Now I'm going to take the bias frames, so I'm going to put the same ISO, the same aperture and the fastest shutter speed. And let's go. So we have the stacked image right here. It's 30 frames, so it's exactly 30... Uh, three hours. The problem is there is just so much coma because of the lens. You can see on the sides this is a wish head nebula 
there's so much uh, cover all around and I'm not really sure how I'm gonna fix that yet. Okay, so we have one version without drizzle and one with drizzle integration. So you can't really tell the difference at all on the main image. But if you zoom in closely, up a preview for each. Uh, let's zoom on you know, the stars. So look at this. This is without drizzle. You can see it's all pixelized. And this is with drizzle. It's all nice and round. That's why it's important to do drizzle integration for all the images you have. So as you can see, all of our shots are useless. There is way too much comma everywhere. So everything is trash. Let's go again. Angry that our first night was ruined, we took the next opportunity for clear skies to go out to the desert again, as we were determined to capture the loop. We weren't really in the mood after the way the first night went, but we made sure our aperture was set to f4, and... This is what we got! This single shot was far more promising than the one from the previous night, plus every single star is pinpoint perfect. Okay, so here is our picture from last night. It's pretty good compared to our first try. Um, here's the comparison. As you can see, the edges are much better now. There is no comma at all, which is perfect. We managed that by doing um, F4 instead of F2.2. And uh, yeah, so now I have very, very good stars. So this picture is okay. Uh, if you compare it to our very, very first one from last year, with our T3i, it's all right, but I really expected more. So we're gonna go ahead and buy a filter, which we're going to choose a 12 millimeter filter, which is not too expensive. And we'll try to add the filter to the camera and add four hours with the filter. And we can show you the difference once we have the final image. The night went so well that we decided to go for a third night right away. This, unfortunately, was another big mistake. You can see here the difference between a single shot under clear skies and one under thin clouds. Disappointing. Our filter is here! It is the astronomic 12mm. The 6mm filters allow for more hydrogen light to go through, but are more expensive. We contacted the makers of the filter and they let us know that modification increases the sensitivity by approximately a factor of four. But as we mentioned before, we do not plan to modify our current camera and we will wait until we get a CCD. Okay, we now have the filter. We are ready to go for our fourth night. Hopefully our last. Hopefully. Alright, let's go. Okay, so we are back here for the third night. This time is going to be for the... The fourth time that we come out yeah, here to time. try to do Bernard's loop. So this time is going to be with a filter, the HA filter. And we have the setup right here. Okay, I'm gonna put the filter now in the camera. It's kind of tricky to put in. When you're not used to it. Okay, as you can see, it's really in. Now I'm gonna put the lens back on. And we're all set. It's time to focus. Here is what a single shot of six minutes with our filter on looks like. As you can see, it is full of noise and all there is to show is a red blob for the Ryan Nebula, Betelgeuse, Rigel, and a few other stars. One very smart thing to do when you're imaging is to have your secondary camera, if you have one, this is a very cheap camera, the T3i on a tripod, and we're doing some intervals, so a time-lapse, towards 
around the sky and just to check if the clouds are coming. We are not sure, we know there are some clouds coming from the north, so we're keeping track of this as a time lapse. And once you have everything, I mean, after like a few minutes or a few, you know, half an hour, you can go back and see how the clouds are moving and you know they're coming towards you or away from you. And it's very important to do that. So we have one test shot right here of 45 seconds and it looks like it's, ooh, it's kind of cloudy over there, see? We became a little worried when we saw the clouds beginning to pop up on our secondary camera. But they dissipated as they approached us, so luckily they didn't bother us. It was a successful night. We were able to focus easily using Beetlejuice as it was the only star that was visible through the viewfinder with the filter on. The night ended on a happy note. Dahlia was having some fun with the light as we finished packing. We checked our pictures on the camera and they all looked promising. Then went home. Finally, with smiles on our faces. Okay, so we just came back. I have no idea how to process HA images, so I'm gonna have to learn online. Let's hope it doesn't take three months. Remember what a single shot with the HA filter looks like? The exact same one is shown here after playing with the levels and curves in Lightroom. Now you can see the Horsehead Nebula and Bernard's Loop. Next, we stack everything and combine the HA with our RGB data. Learning how to combine the HA with RGB was not a piece of cake, as we did not find just one tutorial explaining the process, but instead many tutorials with bits and pieces scattered on the internet. Because it was such an issue, we decided to make a short video tutorial about it that is available to watch on our channel. We then followed very basic processing steps to create the final image. The image is complete. For reference, here is what Bernard's loop looked like with our old T3i. This is the image from night one that sadly ended up in the trash. The image from night two. Next, night three, which ended up going to the trash as well. This is night four, after stacking all the HA images. And now, the combination of night two and night four. Here is Bonner's loop, or actually the entire Orion molecular clock complex, using an unmodified DSLR camera. But wait, there is more. We weren't happy with the Orion Nebula lacking so much detail, and we did not have enough short exposure shots for the core, so we decided to take our image of the Orion Nebula itself and use that as a core. Let us know if you like it! The famous LEO triplet consists of two Messier galaxies, M65 and M66, so we could add two targets to our catalog. This is not a difficult target, but we would have to be very careful during the editing process to bring up the details for each galaxy at the same time. Out of the millions and billions of stars in our universe, our sun is the closest one from home. To image the sun, we would need a special type of telescope, and preferably a CCD camera. Since we've started the hobby of astronomy, we've met some nice fellow astronomers, one of whom happens to own a solar telescope. Will we look through it and see the magnified activity on our nearest bright star? Like the Earth, the planets in our solar system are constantly orbiting our Sun, 
You've probably already seen several of them when looking up at the night sky, but do not realize what they actually are. By getting closer to one of these bright stars, we may discover that it is actually a planet. for tuning into episode 8 of Galactic Hunter. We're so glad to finally get to Bernard's Loop. And if you want to see a post about it, a full post with single shots, processing and everything, it's on galactic-hunter.com. And yep. Also be sure to check out the targets for the next episode. Be sure to vote for them. It's going to be really interesting between a star, a galaxy, or a planet. And just so you know, Bernard's Loop is part of the Astrophotographer's Guidebook which is a book we made about the 60 best targets of the year and um, if you're interested it's in the description below All right. see you next time for I don't know, suspense, we'll see and clear skies, clear skies.